In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to include images in your HTML files. The most important thing to note is that I have my images already sized appropriately in Photoshop, named and in the same folder as my HTML. My HTML is named images.html and I have several images in here, three of them, they're all with Seamus, and they are saved and they are in the same directory. If you don't have them in the same directory, you will have to include your directory path to make it work. So let's take a quick look at the page. I have three photos on here. I'm looking at this with Firebug open in Firefox. That's my little command center down here where you can see my code. And so I have three images. I resize them in Photoshop. I have a thin border here, I have a thick border on this image, I have no border on this image. You'll notice without doing anything, the text will practically touch the image. I have put in a couple of non-breaking spaces right here to give a little bit of distance. So let's look at the code. I'm using Firebug, which lets me view the code and it'll open up each section. I have my head section, Again, my doc type, declaring that's an HTML5 document. HTML language in English, in my head section, I'd say that it's a UTF-8 character set, which is the standard one in America. That's one you should use. And then a title, HTML images. It's all that I have in the head section. In the body section, I have it broken down into three sections. I have the head section or my header section right here where it says HTML images and you can see where that's highlighted on the screen. I have my main area which is just in a div and I have my Seamus images. You'll notice the first one I have an image border of three that's three pixels. I'm aligning the image to the left. Your choices are left, center, or right for alignment. I have the width set to 400 and the height to 337. I could change these and override the size that the picture is, but that is the actual size of the picture. It's a bad idea to override the size of the picture using your HTML tags, especially if the picture is larger. If the picture is larger, if you don't edit it in Photoshop before you bring it in, then it will load the full size picture and then resize it. So if you have a very large picture that you're resizing to 10 or 20 percent of its size, you have to load that whole picture before it resizes and that makes the page much slower to load. I have an alt statement. This set would be what would appear if there were the images were turned off or in some browsers if I hover over the image it will show, go up there as well. That's actually the title showing up here. It depends on the browser. If you don't have the title sometimes the alt tag will show up. Typically the title will show up if they both exist and so the title is Seamus Cures Jet Lag. And then my source which is Seamus.png if I did not have it in the same folder. I would have to have some sort of folder structure in front of this to make sure it was pointing to the right place. Then I have my basic text in a paragraph and then I clear which way everything is floating and it's not showing it here. When you have a non-breaking space for some reason it just shows up as a blank right here but there's a non-breaking space. The code for non-breaking space is ampersand nbsp semicolon. HTML by default will only recognize a single space. If you have more than one space, you have to use a special character, the non-breaking space. And that's why people do not typically indent paragraphs in HTML. Though you can now, when HTML first became popular back around 1997, if you were coding a web page, you would leave a blank line between paragraphs to indicate a new paragraph that's instead of indenting five spaces because to indent you couldn't simply type five spaces it would ignore all except the first one. So I have my second image. Seamus likes a big breakfast and you'll notice that I do have to align right and if I hover over it the title will show up Seamus likes a big breakfast. I have my alt tag which is Seamus 
the sheep enjoying a light Irish breakfast. I have an image border of 10 that makes this thick black border around it. I will do that sometimes on images that are not hyperlinks. If you have a border on an image that is also a hyperlink, it, the border will change color when you mouse over it, usually to the standard blue color for links, and I don't generally want that effect. And you'll notice I did not define the size here because I did properly size it in Photoshop. I was just letting it go to its correct size. My final one, Seamus Worms' his Toes, this one has no border on it. And so I have a border equals zero. This is the way I prefer to do this if it's going to be a link because then there won't be anything to change color. I have it aligning left. I have an alt tag which will show up in browsers for the blind or browsers that have images turned off. I have the title which will show up when I hover over it, Seamus Worms' his Toes. And I have the source. Those are the things that you need to make it work. Now you'll notice I did leave a couple spaces here where I didn't in my other ones. What makes that different? Let's go take a look at the code here. I actually had to put this at the end because of the way it's aligning. Even though the picture shows up first, since they're aligning right, it aligned right all the way over here, and this aligned right till it bumped up against it. And so, again, it's not showing the code, but I have two non-breaking spaces. Let's actually look at this in the code view so that you can see that. This is what the non-breaking space looks like, and so when you're suffering from jet lag, etc., etc., I had two non-breaking spaces before the end of the paragraph. And this is the proper way to do this. You need an ampersand, NBSP semicolon. You'll also find that if you're putting a paragraph tag with nothing in it so that it's not ignored, you have to include a non-breaking space in that because here I'm putting two paragraphs before the footer and it would ignore it if it didn't. I'm using the emphasis to make this italic and the and copy puts in the copyright sign. And that gives you the little copyright sign here. So anytime that you're using the ampersand, it will typically give you some sort of special symbol like the copyright or a non-breaking space. So that's it for images. Really, all you need at a minimum is the image source equals. The rest is just things that help with usability and search engine optimization. Your titles and alt tags are often looked at by search engines like Google, so it's important to have them well documented.